For this piece of code, we'll determine what gets printed out when it's run. We're working with a class hierarchy here with some virtual and non-virtual functions. So we'll be figuring out whether or not we get static versus dynamic binding when each of these virtual functions get called. So I'll pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to pause the video and work on it on your own, and then we'll talk about it together. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the code. We have a grandma, a mom, and a child object, and we have a couple of pointers, one whose type is grandma star and the other one whose type is mom star. So let's take a look at the first print statement. The receiver here is actually just a grandma object without any indirection whatsoever, so it's actually irrelevant whether or not the function is virtual, because in our static and our dynamic type are exactly the same, so whether we have static binding versus dynamic binding, it's going to find the same member function. Okay, so here our type is grandma, so it's going to find the F2 function within grandma, which gives us 2, so that's what gets printed out. On the next line, we have the same situation. The receiver is just a mom object itself, so the static and the dynamic type are the same. We're going to get the F1 function that's defined within the mom class, and that one returns 3, so we're going to get 3 printed out. On the next line, now we have some indirection. We're actually calling a member function through a pointer. So the first thing we need to figure out is what's the static type of the receiver object here. And the G pointer has type grandma star, so the static type is going to be grandma. And so that means that our lookup needs to start within the grandma class. We need to look up the F1 function. And so we find it over there. And we see that this function is non-virtual, which means we'll get static binding. And since our static type, the static type of our receiver is grandma, we're going to get the grandma function, which returns 1. Moving on to the next line, we have a similar situation here where we're calling a member function through a grandma pointer. So our lookup will start in the grandma class. But now the member that we're actually calling is the F2 member. So we'll look for a member named F2 within the grandma class. We indeed find it. We see that, it, that it's virtual, which means that we're going to get dynamic binding. Okay, so now we need to look at the dynamic type of the receiver object in order to determine which version of F2 we get. If we look at the initialization of G pointer, we see that it's initialized to be pointing at a child object. And so therefore, the dynamic type of the receiver is actually child, and we'll get the F2 function that's defined within child, which returns the value 6. Okay, on the next line, we have a pointer here as well. So the first thing we need to figure out is what's the static type of the receiver. The static type is mom. And then we're looking for an F2 function within the mom class. So we find it. And we see that it's actually marked as virtual. So we're going to get dynamic binding. OK, so now we need to figure out what's the dynamic type of the object. Well, M pointer was actually initialized to be pointing at a mom object. So this dynamic type also happens to be mom. And so therefore, we'll get the F2 function within the mom class, and that returns the value 4. OK, on the next line, though, we'll actually change the dynamic type of the object that M pointer is pointing at. So now it's actually going to be pointing at a child object. And now whenever we call a member function through M pointer, the dynamic type will be of the receiver will be child as opposed to mom. So let's go ahead and look, take the look take a look at the next line, which again we're calling a member function through M pointer. The one that we're calling is F1. So we're going to look up in the static type. We're going to look for a member called F1. And indeed we find one over there. However, it's not virtual. So that means that we get static binding. The static type of the receiver is mom. So we're actually going to get the mom version of it printed out. Uh, and the mom version will get called. And that returns 3. So that means that we get the value 3 printed out. Finally, we have a call to F2 
on the M pointer. Once again, we start in the static type to look up the member. And so we look for a member called F2 within the mom class. We find it over there. And now we see that it is virtual. So this means that we get dynamic binding. The dynamic type of the receiver is actually child. We actually set it a couple of lines previously. And so therefore we'll get the F2 that's defined within the actual dynamic type of the object. And so it's going to return the value six and that's what gets printed out. So just to summarize in terms of the function called process, if we don't have any indirection at all, so we just have an object we're using the dot operator to call a member function on that object, then virtual versus non-virtual is irrelevant. The static and the, and the dynamic type are the same. So the member that would be found in either process is going to be the same. If we have indirection, which means that either we're calling a function through a pointer or through a reference, then static versus dynamic type is relevant and virtual vers versus non-virtual is also relevant. Okay, so then the lookup process is we first look up the member within the static type of the receiver in order to figure out, okay, is it actually a member function? Is it virtual versus non-virtual? Okay, and if it is a member function that's non-virtual, then we get static binding and we the version that gets called is the one that we found right there. However, if the function is virtual, then we get dynamic binding. And so then we take the dynamic type of the receiver object in order to determine which one gets called. And we essentially repeat the lookup process within the dynamic type to see which member function is called.